he just kind of melts and becomes so vulnerable, and then he kind of turns. So he goes, I can't think of another person, you know what I mean, to make mm-hmm. such a quick turn like that. And would, it, but it just it works. Would he have killed her if when she stopped singing? I wonder. I I wonder because <laughs> if you if you think about it, like mermaids have the siren song or whatever they do, right? And the pirates or whomever happens to be on a boat, they become so enraptured and they just kind of fall in the water or drown or get taken off by the mermaid or whatever. But if they were to stop, is it like this hypnotic trance that as soon as it's – because we've all seen it in film, right? There's a device that has somebody under a spell, and as soon as it's broken, mere seconds later, they shake it off and they completely come to. Well, actually, no, it's asked and answered for us, right? Mm-hmm. When he points the gun at her, she screams, and all of a sudden, he has this like moment of clarity, and he's got the gun pointed. He's got the angry face, yeah. but Frank gets in there just in time. Yep, he so would have done it. here we are. I'm talking about mermaids, and the answer is right in front of us, much like uh, in uh, Nonstop, right? Where we know, <laughs> like, hey, they can't hear the fight because of uh, the, the air problems that they have. I can't think of what the word is right Turbulence? now. Turbulence? Turbulence. There it is. Well, on a Con Air episode, I call the bakery problem. a bread store. There you go. Hey, it, it is what it is. <laughs> I had a guy, he went and got seafood at the grocery store. We said, hey, where, where'd you go? And he's like, oh, I went to the seafood market. We're like, <laughs> okay. And I'm like, you, you just went to the line at the grocery store? He's like, yeah, you know, the seafood deli. Uh, is it a market or is it a deli? Which one is it? <laughs> yeah, it's a place where they make bread. It's a bakery. Same thing. <laughs> oh, are you ready for my last one? I'm ready. You haven't watched Willy's Wonderland, have you yet? I haven't, but I've okay. heard nothing but wonderful things, and I I want to watch it. Okay. I just have to find it. There's a bathroom fight in there, so, but I won't I won't choose that one. It's a wonderful bathroom fight. But I'm gonna end this up. I'm gonna I'm gonna end it with True Romance, the bathroom <sighs> fight between Alabama and um, uh, what's oh gosh I have his name Alabama and then um man what's his what's Jan, where's James Gandolfini's Feeney's name on this I had it this is horrible but yeah so uh, the Virgil fight, Virgil that's what it is. Oh, and I have it right there, too. Yeah, so the fight between Alabama and Virgil. And thank you for that, by the way. You're welcome. It's it's brutal. It's it's like a feral fight. It just hurts. And it's yeah. mean. And I just like that Alabama just never backs down. Oh, I have Virgil right there. I have Alabama, Virgil, Alabama. That makes no sense. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I'm looking right at Virgil. But I like the court screw bit. I love when she hit. Like, so before they even get in there, she breaks the Elvis on him. But when he throws her through the shower and the shower glass just explodes, it looks like real glass. Obviously, it isn't. But then she stops and just laughs. And she gets in this dude's head. Like Virgil, Virgil's super confident, super, super confident. Hey, babe. But he oh, he gets shook a little bit. I think by by Alabama here. And I like just the way the fight goes. This guy gets too cocky. And he yeah. just ends up fighting a, a bru- like it's a brutal fight and it's mean. And they also I gotta give it props because she takes the top off the, the toilet lid off and bonks him on the head. Yeah, that's another reason why I had to have it. I mean, you gotta have a bonk. And she's you using do. appliances from here, porcelain yeah. weapon. And so I dug it. I dug that she broke it. G- Gandolfini. What, what's interesting? He's a big guy and he uses physicality really well. And then he there's does. Alabama. Just I mean Patricia Arquette just selling. Her fights. And then the stunt coordinator was Charlie Pacerni. The dude worked on the fast movies, Die Hard, Street Fighter, 1994. I tied that back in. And then he was also, he also did the fights in Universal Soldier Regeneration, which is Mm. a great directed DVD action film. And it's just kind of his style. Just a very Tony, uh, you know, Tony Scott, Quentin Tarantino, just mean, bloody, brutal. But a lot of my, like Rama, he's just destroying people, right? And then you have my other, my, my Street Fighter fight. None of these fights are as brutal as this one. I like okay, Raid 2 is brutal, but this one's just mean and brutal, I would say. One on one. And it just freaks me out every time I watch it, but I had to choose it. It it is one of those more it disturbs me a little bit because I a buddy and I recently rewatch or watched this film. We're working on a small podcasting project and it requires uh, compared two films to each other, right? So we actually found out this film and the film Atlantic City make a great double feature, Ooh. right? So if you ever get a chance, try that out for yourself. Um, but I remember watching this, and I'm like, man, I, I forgot how fun a movie this is. Like, it's really good dialogue. You know, it's, I love 
um, uh, Gary Oldman in this film, one of the greatest villains uh, characters ever. And then it gets to this moment and I'm like, oh, no, like I'm really taken out of this film now. Like it's I'm no longer like on that kind of fun ride. I'm just like, can this? Yeah, there's no Brad Pitt Stoner over. Right. There's no Brad Pitt Stoner. Exactly. Nobody's just like bombing around. And it reminds me a lot of uh, David Lynch's wild, uh, crazy. Oh, gosh. Wild Wild at at heart. Yeah. Wild at heart. When um, uh, Laura Dern's character meets up with Willem Dafoe's character, Oof. right, Bobby Bermuda, and that gets really intense and disturbing. Like, we're having a goofy, fun David Lynch time, and then we get really serious, and I'm like, oh, like, uh, it's one of those, it's just, it's flat out disturbing. And the glass, and it's scary, because like you said, he's using his, Gandolfini is using his physicality, something he's great at. He's sadistic, he's looking at her with these dead shark eyes, right? He never gets overly excited about anything. His eyes stay exactly the same the whole time, kind of that Kubrick looking down from your brow kind of thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And just is is relentless, and you don't know where it's going to go. She's thrown into the shower. Is he going to cut her with the glass? But like you said, ends it with a good bonk. <laughs> and we don't really see uh, someone using the back of the toilet lid uh, uh, or tank, excuse me, in any of these other uh, situations. Also, flames. Hair we don't spray. see flames in the other bathrooms. None. Like, oh, there's good water work. There's good bonking. And there's flames. And a lot of blood. A lot a of blood. A whole lot of blood that we're not seeing in the other ones. I think cumulatively, this one has the most blood. I would say the shotgun adds to it. But – that's out of the bathroom, so I don't I don't think that counts. But I just I love a good it's primal, and I had to add it. it I, I had to add something different, and plus it's a hotel fight, so I wanted to add a different aspect to our list here. Covered all my, your bases. That's right. Who's your final pick? My final pick is going to be Resident Evil Afterlife. Yes. Uh, ah. Alice Claire taking on the Axe Man, which is just. Just insane. This is another one. I don't know what it was, but I just started picking film franchises and going through them, and Resident Evil was one of them. I'd never seen any of the films, never played the video games. Uh, I'm not – I don't do good with horror, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, someone said Resident Evil is less horror and more like kind of monster movie-ish type stuff, Um, and I had so much fun. Those films are so fun. They're not the best, but they're still just – they're fun to watch, and it's just a good popcorn movie, right? Yeah, they're underappreciated. We did the whole franchise on MFF, and I listened to all the commentaries, and I just spent a lot of time with the movie, and I love them more now. And this fight scene, they use James Cameron's Avatar rig for this fight scene. What? Yeah. And when I saw it in theaters in 3D, it looks beautiful. Huge camera. I mean, it's just a beautiful camera that they use. They use, like, a phantom camera for the slow motion. And I'm stealing from you here. But I love how it, it makes sense. So I also like that Alice gets knocked out and Claire's the hero. And it's yes. so simple. The the axe man chases Claire, knocks all the pipes, water everywhere, she flips over him, then she runs back to where she came from come came mm-hmm. came from. It's a very simple plot, but they both look awesome. Uh, like it's like this isn't even Ali Larder's movie and she gets a superhero landing in this fight. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And then the big, uh, you know what I mean? The rain's falling and she's just there like staring it down. She gets both of it. Oh, it's so cool. I love it. And both worlds. Alice pops up and shoots the quarters through the thing's head. Oh, man. What a great yeah. fight. And good it, water it work. Is. Best water. Would you say it's the best water work? So much water. It, it, and I think what helps, though, what helps make it so great is because there's so much. They have a lot more to play with. So it's almost like going to a rock show, and you see the flames are coming up in the background. You're like, yeah, they know what's up. This is what that film does, but with water. And there's no rock. There's just a, a big axe. Um, the it, one thing – I wish I would have seen this in theaters in 3D um, because when I watched it at home, when the axe is – I feel like the 3D effect – takes away from it just a little bit like they obviously wanted to focus in on that um and the other thing i enjoy a good slow motion but when everything is in slow motion like (laughs) this scene is like close to three minutes long if you were to play it at a regular speed this is maybe a minute and a half like there is a lot of slow motion going on and after a while i'm like just hit them (laughs) it's taking you 30 seconds to hit the guy please just hit him already that's what I love about the fight, though. When Wes, uh, Paul Anderson gets his hands on some new toys, he uses them. So he's like, yeah, let's sure do it. it. And you know what's funny? I wrote about uh, Paul Anderson's career for Rotten Tomatoes, 
and I wrote about this fight and how great it is, but so like the 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 edit in it, someone made an edit. They're like, "There's too much slow motion, though." <laughs> so I didn't even write that, but in my article, <laughs> they included there's too much slow motion yeah. in this fight. But it looks beautiful, and it's just it's not like so you know you talk about the the true romance fight. You know, it, it's it's a it's gratuitous. I would say. I mean, it's primal. It's gratuitous. But this one, they're just they're just badasses shooting people. Like it's not yeah. it's not played up in any kind of way. It's just two ladies destroying an axe man with quarters. Or coins, whatever a, they use. A monster axe man, by the way, too. This yep. is like – it's like a reverse pyramid head, right, from the oh, Silent Hill yeah. films. Instead of having a massive head, dude's got a massive body and a little head. But he still has that big axe that he's just wielding around, and he's terrifying. Like if – again, if I'm if I'm in the bathroom and I see that guy, I'm, I'm taking myself out. I'm just going to lay down as if a bear is in the room, soil myself, and just hope he goes away. Yep, just chop me in half. Yeah. Or don't you don't then, use that flat end though. That would be horrible. <laughs> oh my god! Just like a butter knife. Just it would take a couple times. Oh. And he, then he's apologizing. Like, oh, I'm really sorry. Usually this is you know much sharper. I've dulled it out from all the other people I've murdered gru- uh, gruesomely. It's like oh okay. All the other body parts on it protect you from dying the first time. <laughs> oh gosh! Is that an ear? It doesn't matter. My carotid artery is still intact. Uh, is that Liam Neeson's thumb? <laughs> What hey, got I him? Found my nose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the axe man. The axe man hit him with his axe, but the thing that killed him was Liam Neeson's thumb. <laughs> right in the neck. It wasn't all those nails in his shoulders and his face. <laughs> it was the thumb. Yeah, who did that to the axe man? By the way. I, I, it can't be a wardrobe thing. He couldn't have wait. It's not like he's got a cape. I can understand if he's got a cape made of like chain. And, you know, human intestine, and he's keeping it on with the nails. But it's just, there's no need. There's no pauldrons. There's no armor. It's just nails hanging out. Maybe it's like a tough guy thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I get six nose piercings. I'm a I'm a bad dude. Don't mess with me. And it's like, okay. I mean, I don't know what to tell you there, man, but okay. I'm 14 foot axe man. And he's like, I got to look tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He built that at home too. Uh, That's the thing. Oh, uh, and I, I, I already said this, but I love that Alice gets knocked out, and then it's up to yeah. Claire to win. It's in in these are Mila's vehicles to be the ultimate badass, and she just let Ellie Larder have a cool scene. I appreciated that. That was cool. Absolutely, because any other film, right? The the sidekick, if you will, or the secondary character would have been knocked out, tossed to the side, and then we have our main character become even more of a hero and save them. Mm-hmm. Or it's that little twist, right, where they're not really friends. It's like a frenemies kind of thing where, like, I don't really like you. But after they save that person's life, they're like, I guess we got more in common than we thought. Or, like, some kind of hokey line, right? Yeah. And then they go through and, and, and throw coins at each other. Or Do you think they picked up the pennies and the quarters and the coins after this? I would have. After the scene? I would have. There should be a deleted scene where zombies is just picking them up. You can't waste like, those. Oh, great. I'm, I'm double parked. <laughs> zombie grabs it and drives away on a moped. Oh, moped zombies are the worst. It's it's there's and that's the thing. There's a lot of films about those too. Night of the Living Moped Zombie. Oh, yeah. Day of the Living Moped Zombie. Moped Zombie Weekend. Oh, moped Zombie one. Weekend Two. Bernie's cousin. What slumber party moped zombie? Oh my goodness. I got to write that down. Now, I have a question before we get out of here. You are you're you're a character named Hank McCluskey, right? You're a famous zombie fighter. Yeah, old man McCluskey's kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the legend, <laughs> the legend. And so a lot of people thought that you getting the job was just, you know, you're getting it based on your father's uh uh reputation. You know, they thought it was just um I was going to say narcolepsy, but that's a complete complete wrong word. It's, it could um, be that. You know what I mean? If dad's really good at it, but he can't hack it anymore. Wait, what's the young the, bull in there. What, what's the word? Uh, you, you get Narcissism? It because, nar, no, no. You get it because your dad, like your parents, they hand oh, you the job. Oh, what happened? Oh. I told you I'm down to 7%. So I, we used to talk about this on film sets all the time because the way people got jobs. It's oh, um, oh my gosh, the word is right there too. Everyone is just hating us right now. I used to... This is one of those words that as soon as we say it, it's just going to hurt. What do you call yeah. it? Get the job. Be- <laughs> this is the thing where we're buying vows on Wheel of Fortune when we don't need to be buying vows. We're, t- we're one letter in. We shouldn't be buying vows right now. Uh, all right. Get the job. Oh, man. We can do this. We can do this. 
think, 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 think. I want to look it up, but I don't want to look it up. Because we should know this. Yes. Narciss... No, not Narcissus.